There we go. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Yes, uh, we're very happy to, to be able to join. We're both um, located in, in Stockholm. So we are calling in from a snowy and very chilly uh, Stockholm today and this week. So I'm Helene Kalgarden and I work as a knowledge management trainer and consultant at BMC. And prior to that, I was with uh, Cameron for seven years. And if you have any questions during our presentation, uh, you can add them to the chat and we should get time at the end to, to answer and discuss if, if, if you want to. And if you have any questions you don't want to put in the chat, you can reach out to us directly. You have our contact details on the screen here. Perfect. Thank you, Helen. Uh, so we have about 50 minutes, uh, which have started. And uh, during this time, we wanted to cover um, knowledge management and why it's worth spending time on knowledge management. And we will also try to explain what uh, BMC is doing in this space right now. So what is uh, really the latest uh, in this area that BMC is doing. Uh, and that sort of, so, so the different parts here will be knowledge management and self-service, uh, what's going on in the industry and why that is so important right now, especially. Um, and I mean, we're just uh, still a little bit in this pandemic, uh, and I think that uh, digitalization has just exploded right now, and, and it's easy to understand why we need to have everything uh, available, not, not only in our heads, but also digitally, so it makes a lot of sense. And uh, Helen, who really is an expert on the process of knowledge management and self-service, will uh, cover more on that part. And I will also try to share what BMC is doing from a technical standpoint right now and when the new things can be available for, for everyone also to, to uh, use. And then I hope we have uh, plenty of time for questions at the end. So uh, please use the chat for that. So the main question here is really, uh, we want to put some clarity to this question. Whose responsibility is knowledge management? And uh, we have together, me and Helen, about 35 years of experience helping organizations with self-service automation and knowledge management and uh, have, of course, picked up a lot of things that can help on how to become successful with, uh, with these uh, things. And the old way of work where you focus mostly on this individual ownership and quality was really keys when you worked with any information, actually. Um, and that doesn't really work today where things are changing to speed that we haven't seen before. We are constantly changing environments and, and everything is going so fast. So, uh, I mean, digitalization and new ways of solving old problems means that our knowledge base will be outdated and irrelevant if we don't meet up and find new, more efficient ways to keep it updated and healthy. And that is, of course, a challenge and we need to... Uh, work the right way to make make it successful and and uh, of course the, the key to succeed with this is collaboration it's not a one-man show it's not only the subject matter experts that should do all the the knowledge sharing this is really about uh, teamwork and also a little bit of cultural i would say to to uh, uh, share what you know and and uh, collaborate around keeping uh, this updated and, and uh, I think that uh, uh, the key with succeed with, uh, with collaboration and speed is really a little bit also in contrast with individual ownership and quality that used to be the keys for working with knowledge management. So I think that's one reason that many organizations struggle a lot with uh, keeping this updated <coughs> and healthy. Uh, and if we put some numbers on this, it becomes uh, even more clear or relevant why we should actually spend some time making sure that we have this under control and, and uh, are doing it the right way. And according to EDC and New York Times, three out of five employees make decisions on incomplete information. So that, that's uh, a lot of uh, decisions based without the, the necessary or at least with, without the full picture. So that's, that's a little bit scary, of course. 
90% of knowledge that is needed is not easily available. So that tells me that we really need to find new ways to share knowledge in organization. And, and uh, that, then we really need to centralize how we work with knowledge management uh, and, and uh, think from the customer view rather than that it's us from IT or, or uh, product owners that needs to get our information out. It's really to listen in and see what, what are the organization looking for and what information are they not finding that they should find. Um, and 61% has at least four different systems that they need to access to do their job. So that also makes things a bit more challenging. And 35% or more of our daily time is spent on searching or looking for information every day. So I think that that is um, a very big number. And that, that is actually 20 minutes per hour that we spent every day on a daily basis just to look for information and relevant knowledge that we need to have to take decision or uh, do our job. Uh, so if we multiply that with uh, all the working days, it's, it's a lot of hours and days that we spend just looking for information. So we just learned that we spent about two and a half, half hours a day searching for information. And uh, my experience is that the reason behind this is many. Uh, first of all, large organizations many times have up to 20 or 30 different knowledge bases where they, they try to, to store information around processes and how to do things. Um, and, and just that by itself makes it very complicated and decentralized. And it is not a very efficient way of work with knowledge management. And what we have seen is that organizations that really does this in, in a totally new way and try to consolidate knowledge into one healthy knowledge base makes life so much easier for everyone, both for, for everyone maintaining the knowledge, but more important for employees searching for relevant knowledge. Uh, and, and if we look at what we often meet today is that we see that knowledge is fragmented, it's, it's <coughs> slow. Uh, you have to do manual research to find it. Uh, you cannot be sure that it's updated or relevant. Uh, it, it can be hard to find within the tool that you're actually working in. Um, and and uh, you have to look through a lot of different results to validate which one is accurate and the one you should use. And also we have a big language issue where we still, uh, uh, I mean, many times think that e English is uh, the language that everyone understands, but especially global organization uh, struggles a lot with having this uh, in the relevant language and easily accessible with, with that. And there are great technologies to solve that. And if we think about a company like Google uh, and how we work privately, there is a reason that Google has one search for everything. They, they don't ask us to start to specify what type of question we have or what area we are interested in. We just put in a search phrase and expect it to be fantastic. And I think that is, what we should aim for, uh, when we provide support to employees and customers. And, and uh, today the technology is definitely there. So we, we just need to make that happen really quickly. Uh, and just to give some uh, heads up on what Helen will cover, it, it, of course, the answer is that everyone is responsible responsibility to uh, help with keeping the knowledge updated and relevant. It's a cultural thing and something that everyone uh, can use and, and they should really reward knowledge sharing in the organization. But, but it's, a, it's not something that happens overnight. Uh, and to search for information has been uh, something we have done for many years now to just uh, use a search uh, engine to find what we want to, to see. And Gartner predicts that by uh, 2022, 85% of all customer service interaction will actually start with self-service. And that is up from 
about every other 48% in 2019. So we think that we are already mature and use self-service and that is fine. But think about these numbers that this tells us that um, th this will be the new standard. It's, it will go from uh, nice to have to need to have. And, and uh, that's something that really needs to work now. And, and also something that of course take the, the load off uh, the, the personal support or the staff support. So how do we handle these challenges? Helen, I will hand over to you and uh, tell us about what approach, approach we should use as an organization to, to succeed with this. Thank you, Per. Knowledge is a key asset, as it says on the screen, as an individual, as well as an organization. So referring back to the figures Per just showed us, how can we manage knowledge and information so poorly that people have to spend that amount of time every day searching for information and knowledge? Is it a strategic decision? Is it a strategic question? Lack of defined knowledge management processes? Or is it a technology question? Well, the combination is our experience, um, and we will come back to that. In general, our experience is that many organizations underestimate the power of knowledge. On the other hand, it's quite easy to panic when someone is about to leave the company and all their great expertise disappears. We ask them to document everything they know. You know, write it all down before you go. Make sure you, you, you put it here in this file of storage so we can access it when you're gone. But wouldn't it be better if that was a continuous process, which we could benefit from every day? And before we move on, uh, I just want to stop and look at the term knowledge management for a second. So knowledge management can be described as the process of creating, sharing, using and improving knowledge and information in an organization. When that is not happening in a structured way, we tend to spend most of our time looking for relevant and accurate information. And organizations in general aim to minimize interruptions for their employees and customers as well as maximizing the value we get from each other by, for example, improving our products, services, processes, and relationships. With almost every human interaction, there is some kind of knowledge exchange which we can learn from. Some interactions are tracked via incident management systems, CRM, project management tools, chats, and so on, and some are just conversations. The outcome of the interactions are, however, rarely captured somewhere for the purpose of reusing what we have learned next time we do something similar. Next slide, please. So how can we benefit from organ our organization's <coughs> collective experience in every interaction? Well, one way is building a relevant knowledge base that reflects the collective knowledge of our organization. With a relevant knowledge base, you can empower individuals, teams, your service delivery and your customer offerings. And I often hear, and I'm sure you agree there, and surely other people too, that companies say, but we have a knowledge base tool. Okay, but are people using that knowledge base tool as they spend 35% of their working day looking for information? Well, if they are, then there are some findability issues or poor content. So no, they are probably not referring to that knowledge base. And the support organization, are they referring to relevant knowledge base articles as they solve issues and answer questions or are they <coughs> reinventing the solutions every time? Well, in our experience, not even the best knowledge management solution in the world will get you there without a process for knowledge management. So in order to create, share, use, and improve your knowledge, you need a strategy, a process. Next slide, thank you. So KCS or Knowledge Centered Service is a best practice methodology for knowledge management. I mentioned in the beginning that I am a knowledge management and um, trainer and consultant. So I am a certified KCS trainer as well. I know that some people that attend this uh, event have actually taken training, some with me as well. But um, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, about KCS, a knowledge-centered service, I will um, describe it on a high level. 
So with almost 30 years in development, KCS has been successfully implemented by companies like Avaya, Apollo, Dell, HP Enterprise, BMC, and many, many more. And it is a best practice methodology for knowledge management. And in a nutshell, KCS strives to integrate the use, improvement, and creation of knowledge into the problem-solving process. To evolve content, so our knowledge base, based on demand and usage. To develop a knowledge base of collective experience to date, with an emphasis of to date, meaning the knowledge base should reflect our collective experience every day. So it's never done, it's never complete. And to reward learning, collaboration, sharing and improving, connecting back to what Per said before, that it's a cultural thing. It's not just about a process, but it's also a change for the organization. And KCS is the knowledge management strategy in many organizations, since it's a very well-defined process for knowledge management. It is comprised of techniques for anything from archiving strategies, content migration strategies, and workflow definitions to process adherence and KPIs for knowledge management. We will not dive deeper into cases now, other than saying that if you are interested in knowing more, feel free to get back to us or to BMC. So, but going back to the three potential reasons why organizations are not effectively managing their knowledge. So was it a strategic decision or a question? Lack of defined knowledge management processes or a technology question. So technology should enable us to achieve what we want to achieve. And we're gonna have a look and see how technology can enable the KM strategy. Pair. Thank you, Helen. Uh, yes, so to switch a little bit from, uh, from the processes and, and the different way of working with knowledge management, uh, let's look a little bit more around uh, uh, the product side and the technology side of it. And uh, uh, as I said in the, in the beginning, BMC acquired Comround, uh, a leading very focused knowledge management company about a year ago. So the question that I have got every day since then is uh, how will this affect BMC and BMC cu customers? And uh, uh, on a high level, it means that BMC is taking knowledge management very seriously. And uh, of course, we are really super excited to be to be part of this much, much bigger company and also have a sort of bigger uh, picture on, on how knowledge management should um, work with other parts of the what you're doing with with it and how you can help your customers of course um, uh, and if we start with uh, uh, for helix sauce uh, customers come around will be a default technology that we will be used for km um, it is uh, it will of course come in different flavors and different shapes uh, but looking back, Comround spent more than 20 years focusing just on building the best knowledge management software that was available. And, and we had the luxury of being very specialized and focused on only that. Uh, and I would say that, again, that the unique combination of expertise in, in the methodology that Helen mentioned, and also working with uh, the latest cloud-based AI-empowered technology, uh, really took us to, to a place where we saw that this could really have a big impact on organizations using it and be extremely successful. We'll come back to that in a minute. And, and the combination, I would say, have always been the strength of this. It's not just a technical thing or it's just not just a process or um, strategic thing. It's really the combination of both parts that is being good together. And um, I also would say that being part of BMC is is an ultimate combination of a very focused and specialized tool, but also with the strength of a global big company like, like BMC is. Um, so to start with, Comround is now called BMC Helix Knowledge Management. So that's what we refer to when we talk about it. Uh, and the technology is since 2018, one of only five KCS V6 verified knowledge management tools globally and actually the only one based out of Europe to start with. 
Uh, and this means that we, we really enable the practices of efficient knowledge management processes. So you don't have to practice KCS to benefit from, from uh, the functionality and feature in the processes of a KCS verified tool. It, it just is a very good uh, process, uh, even though. Uh, and the BMC Helix knowledge management is both a standalone knowledge management solution. And it's also, of course, being integrated with uh, many other BMC products like uh, Helix Virtual Agent and Helix ITSM and Digital Workplace and so on. So it will, it, it are in a good way to become really the center of knowledge management for BMC SaaS products. Uh, and the plan, if we talk about versions that I think you, you are very updated on, hopefully, is that everyone that are on version 21.3.01 or later will be able to access uh, the come around technology if you are using the SaaS uh, version of, of the Helix. Uh, and also worth mentioning the, the quote by Gartner here that uh, uh, you should really establish a foundation in knowledge management by using techniques like KCS before uh, throwing yourselves over the technology and uh, start to add chatbots or virtual support agents uh, because you, you really want the healthy knowledge base to feed all this new great technology with. And that is what we have seen, especially during the last five, six years, that if you have a great knowledge, healthy knowledge base to feed this new fantastic te technology with, then it's when it really starts to happen amazing things. And you can get the value back that you are spending on, on times updating the knowledge from this technology. Looking at the image here on the screen, uh, we talk about intelligent knowledge. And if we look at the core part, we have seen that uh, one way of becoming very successful and help our customers is by focusing extremely on the knowledge part. I mean, the knowledge base itself and the, the tool itself, focus on the community. And that is everyone that is interacting with the knowledge management software. So that could be typically a, service desk agents or customer service agents or anyone that is really interacting heavily with the knowledge base. And it can, of course, be a customer or employee also searching for knowledge. So it really anyone that interacts with the technology. And then the data that is, of course, super important. So we, we track all the movements and everything that is happening in the tool. So this combination is really giving us a, a extremely good picture on and helping the clients to understand what we should add, what we should focus on, and also give them a lot of predictness so that they don't, they, they, everyone wants to move out of this situation where you are reactive and just sort of uh, try to uh, uh, try to solve things as they happen, but to be much more proactive and spend some time on this proactiveness and, and uh, be well prepared. And on the next layer, we are using this new um, internet technology with uh, cognitive services, uh, a lot of Microsoft focus, as you can see. And then on the um, uh, next level, we you see that you, where you consume knowledge can be in many different places. It can be in the in a chatbot, in a self service portal, uh, LMS mobile system, or or pretty much any place so so uh, uh, when you have a really healthy knowledge base that's normally when you start to see a lot of different use cases for this knowledge where you actually can use this to become more successful and get uh, uh, greater customer experience and, and also help your employees to find what they are looking for so looking a little at the actual uh, technology that we are talking about here. So search is of course extremely uh, important when we talk about uh, knowledge management and self-service and automation. And uh, functionality that comes with Helix knowledge management is full text search, uh, NLP, facet navigation, filter tagging, synonyms, autocomplete, uh, and, and text analysis and help with did you mean, things like that, that we, uh, <clears throat> And to get from Google and similar leading uh, search engines. So that's something that we can really offer our employees based out of our own data. 
So if you put in a, a search string to give an example of what it can look like, in this case, I'm looking for a washing machine uh, and I have some issue with the door, obviously. So this is uh, uh, really product related. Uh, and as you can see, I get this uh, autocomplete and this is machine learning based on what other person in my organization or in, in the same customer base has looked for before. Um, and I can also see that if it's a poor search, I can do it again. Uh, this is typical knowledge article where we have the tagging, we have related articles um, things like that. And uh, I can uh, also, this is based out of a KCS uh, template. Uh, and we also have a, a very strong translation engine built into the tool. Uh, so this is machine translation and it's based on Google. So it's not only the content itself, but you can actually translate the entire user interface with just a click and everything is configurable. And depending on where you have your employees or customers or what language you want to uh, support, this is something that we configure, of course, uh, to begin with. But uh, um, it, it really happens live in a click and is so powerful when you have uh, to support uh, people in, in different languages. And then we have at last, uh, if I wanna highlight three things here, is the, is the reporting and the insights. <coughs> uh, and what comes out of the box with Helix Knowledge Management now is uh, uh, reports that really gives you a good view of what's going on. So I would say that just the reporting itself is a reason to, to move to this uh, solution because you can see here is in the example, you can see uh, geographically where are your customers based, where are they accessing the knowledge base. Everything is live and you can uh, drill down just by click on any object that you see. Uh, it, it tracks all the behavior data, it's uh, enabled predictive support, it prevents knowledge gaps, um, and it also actually recommend actions. So um, th this is back to what Helen talked about with, with the process of knowledge management. So this is really supporting that process and, and uh, makes a lot of sense for <coughs> knowledge worker that has to put their time uh, in, in the most efficient place and do the right things. So um, uh, th that is really something that stands out. Uh, and talking about results, um, to set goals and make quick wins is really essential when you work with knowledge management and self-service. And um, I hope you can see on the graphs, it's maybe a bit blurry, but this is real numbers from a POC that started in this case in, in the beginning of the year. And uh, we can see one year here. Um, and they started by uh, feeding the, the knowledge base in the beginning of the year. And that was just internally for the, for the support team. After about five to six months, the knowledge base was good enough to launch externally. So it, it was launched as a self-service. And you can really see on the yellow line how it skyrocketed and, and uh, that's where, where the red cross is on the image. And um, uh, we can also see that other support channels like chat, phone and email uh, started to go a little bit down or at least staying at the same, same level, but uh, self-service just skyrocketed. and, <coughs> and uh, in this time became the absolute most important uh, support channel for this specific uh, organization. And uh, the, the self-service actually in, one, in 12 months, it's increased with over 400%. So that, that was of course, very successful uh, proof of concept that we did in one country. And after this service was launched, uh, it was then within less than a year launched in 30 different languages for the same specific uh, client. And, and just last year, uh, that the Helix Knowledge Management software was distributed over 17 million viewed knowledge articles for this specific customer. So, so that's extreme if you think about it. And Helen, I know you were involved in this case also. Uh, what would you say was the 
main goal for this client with with this initiative with uh, i know that they didn't just only focus on technology but also about uh, the methodology and and the try to get to this state where they had more of a knowledge sharing culture yes they took a big um, sort of very large and extensive um, initiative for knowledge management building a whole centralized organization around knowledge management um, and one of the reasons was that they wanted to centralize knowledge because it's it's they they could see that they were sort of reinventing the wheel in 34 countries uh, even if the per, the products that the com the customers were buying were the same so the only difference was in, in the language in which they supported the products so a centralized organization within the customer's general organization, focusing on knowledge sharing, they rolled out KCS as their strategy for knowledge management, trained the core team and trained everybody else as well. Um, and, and one of the reasons, of course, why they wanted to, because this is, as, as the pair mentioned here, it, it's launched on the on the external websites they support. So it's it's open and public to any person buying these products. Um, and they wanted to bring back the customer experience with their products into their own domains. So they could actually analyze and find out what do the customers have a problem with. Because as you know, Customers don't always create a case or contact us over the phone or, or email. You know, if we Google things, we get search hits in forums and um, other kinds of groups um, or Google and end up on another site where someone has published a solution to a certain problem. And, and if that happens, of course, the organization doesn't know that the customers have these issues and problems, but everybody else knows about it. But bringing customers back into their own websites and domains where they can analyze and see what have they searched for, what, have, what articles have they viewed, what type of problems do they really have, they could drive product improvement. And of course, that's, that's kind of the goal here that, you know, we need support, we need service organizations, but the less problems and issues and questions we have, the better for the customer. So, and of course, the language aspect that they have all these uh, brands and products in 34 different markets and countries to be able to support the customers in their own language. And instead of translating every single knowledge article that they used to support their cons customers with, um, which of course, if you send it off to a translator, it's cost a lot of money and it takes a lot of time, especially it could take four weeks before you had that knowledge article translated into French or German or, or whatever. And of course, during that whole time, nobody could, could access it in, in Germany or France. They couldn't get their less resolution in self-service. So that was also one of the reasons if we talk about technology for going for, for our solution, since we have the built-in machine translation capabilities. So uh, these were some of the main reasons, and uh, it was a very fantastic um, project, if we call it a project or implementation, which we did very fast. In just a few months, we had actually launched it in 30 different countries uh, and many, many websites. And yeah, uh, the, the um, success goes on as well. Yeah. yeah thank you, Helen. Yeah, that's a, really an amazing story. and, and uh, I think also that one insight I got was that uh, by digitalization, but did digital support compared to manual support, you know, it's also easier to track and, and do some kind of root cause analyze. So I think that in this case, when it was uh, pretty product oriented, it gave them so much insights on products and, and the product that needed to be improved and, and uh, that they could sort of circle back to customer experience and and uh, really help them with, with the product development to understand what the customer really appreciated and what needed to be uh, improved. So I think the same uh, can be applied for internal customer support for employees mm -hmm. to understand what, what software and what processes we need to look over or have more training in. And it, it gets so much more easy to track when you have it uh, as self-service or 
uh, track, to, track all the data of that. Another customer that uh, is uh, really fantastic to work with is Volvo Cars. And they are using the same technology and uh, also uh, have to share the, the outcome and the short-term results of that implementation. So within 12 months, here were some of the KPIs and the, the things that they tracked as an organization, support organization. And um, the, the numbers are coming from customer service. So this is the, the real experience. The, <coughs> Uh, outcome of what of, of the job they are doing. So uh, the, the survey showed that they increased uh, the competence of the agents with a couple of percent. The resolution rate increased by almost five percent, and the general customer satisfaction increased also, which is of course very important. And net promoter score, which is their top KPI, and a net promoter score is uh, you, you could say that it's how uh, loyal you are to a brand or the chances that you would recommend a brand to someone else that increased uh, extremely much in just 12 months. So, um, I mean, it's impossible to say that the implementation of uh, knowledge management and self-service by Helix Knowledge Management did all this, but of course it was a key component in, in this change. So with that, uh, I think the, uh, the, the minutes has gone really fast here and uh, I think I hand over to some conclusions to you, Helen. Yes. So some conclusions. Uh, define the process for knowledge management. And I can only guess that some of you really don't want another process. You know, don't we have enough of those? Well, no, implement it right with clear goals. A process for knowledge will make the whole difference and use technology that supports your strategy. And this may be obvious, but I still think it's very easy to adapt to the tools rather than the other way around. So what is it you want to and need to achieve? Technology should be there to help you achieve that. And adopt to the changing environment. I mean, your customers, the market, the industry, your competitors, everything changes at increasing speed and be adaptable and flexible. Learn from experience and throughout the journey. Refine and rethink your processes and your tech environment. Is there anything else you can do to make it even easier and to be even better? So I think we have a few minutes for some questions, if there are any. Do we have any questions in the room? I, I have one. Um, how do you actually convince a customer to act, to put their knowledge articles into KCS? Because I have a customer that is very adamant about not giving it to all the support people to transfer their knowledge into knowledge management because he's afraid that they'll put stuff in it and it'll get out and shouldn't have gotten out. Uh, that's a good question. And, and then that is, uh, is it in a support organization? Um, well, it's this support team. It's a packaging company that does a lot of shipping and things yeah, like yeah. that. And they're, he's concerned that his staff is not uh, aware enough to, one, put it into the knowledge article and two, okay. put it in without putting in the, right, the wrong terminology. Well, that's a very good question, and, and I hear it quite often, and, and I have, I think, one approach that I, I usually have anyway is that, okay, so if, if we don't have a knowledge base and if we don't work with knowledge, you, you still allow them to speak with the customers, right? You allow them to, you know, we're fine with, with our employees or our support staff to have conversations directly with the customers in, through tickets, uh, cases, chats, phone, email. And, and that we do without them even confirming their knowledge with anyone. So, so the question is like, what's the difference? You know, if I know that it's more, it feels more static and black and white if we add it to an article and it's in the knowledge base and it's a name kind of attached to it in some way. Uh, but I would say that it's more, it's gonna be more verified, especially if you have everybody else being part of the verification process than leaving it up to the individuals and their own expertise. 
Well, I had success with the House of Representatives because I had um, the project lead for Remedy supporting my actions and getting them and uh, dealing with their old knowledge articles. They had 5,000 articles that hadn't been updated and triplicated and all this, and I had to clean them up and it got it down from 5,000 to 600 articles. Uh, but the current customer I deal with, I don't get that support because he doesn't want to utilize it because he's afraid that things will get out there that shouldn't get out. And I, even though I tell him about the articles, he can't, he still, that he can do the approvals, he still mm -hmm. doesn't want to go that route. So yeah, but then, it's a struggle. But then I, yeah, yeah, and I, I totally understand. And it's a very, very common challenge. And I think, I mean, one way, of course, if we talk about a, a KM strategy is to define what should be in the knowledge base and what shouldn't be in there. And of course, it's information that could cause big problems if, it, if it's not correct, it shouldn't be in there. It shouldn't be easy to share or easy for someone to misuse. But some things and are, probably would not cause any big problems. It will be, okay, it's wrong information, so let's fix that. So I think that's a good uh, exercise to do as well as part of the strategy and planning to define the scope for the knowledge base. Right. Well, one of the things... One of the things I like about KCS is that it takes the process out of, do I put it in as a how-to or do I put it in as a reference? Or that's always was the issue before. And now it's just one form, one entry, and it's less confusing. Uh, yeah. And it's now back on to convincing them to do it. Now, I'll finish up with one more question, and that is on the visibility groups. Are you guys focusing on promoting that capability to restrict their articles or because it looked like on your chart the self-service was for their customers to use where and when i did the house of representatives i had to put a visibility in for different organizations yeah we, we can in, in in this solution we can have different visibility groups for sure for different types of content so you could say that on top of having access rights, as in a reader rights and other types of rights, on top of that, you could say that, well, this group of readers can only see this content and those groups of readers can see that content and it, for internal groups as well. Definitely. Right. So in the, in the example that we talked about here um, with, with one of the customers, they have totally different content for their service technicians because that's something that should definitely not be used by others. So they, they, own, they have exclusive rights to that content. And then you have general support agents who are working cases with customers. They have access to other type of content. So you have marketing team having other types and operational teams have access to other content. So yes, that's, that's totally possible. Okay, we have one more question. So yep. um, the come around, but are our existing knowledge articles automatically going to be there or do we need to recreate them? It's, it's a little bit hard to hear. Sorry, it's low. It's very low volume. Uh, she wants to know if with the come around, come around, we do KCS articles, will they still be accessible without us having to migrate them over? Or will we have to do some kind of migration process to get the come around to pull in our existing articles? Oh, you mean if you have a BMC ITSM, for example? Right. Yep. But, uh, no, that wouldn't be... Uh, when the integrations are, are sort of completed, uh, you won't need to do any uh, migration job as such. Okay. What if we, they were using references and how-to? Would we have to do a migration? Oh, you mean if you have different types of articles? Right, because I mean, we have the capability of doing custom templates, and we have the capability of doing still how to and reference and things like that. So, if mm -hmm. they switch over to come around, are we going to have to migrate everything over? Oh, uh, yeah, good question. And I, I, um, I don't know, Per, you may have more insights into how far they've come in that sense with the integration. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, th this is an, uh, of course, important question, and, and we are. We are build, as you said, Helen. We are building. We try to automate it as much as it goes. But uh, I think we will have to look into each specific uh, use case and, and see what what the knowledge base looks like and what the article looks like. But 
if we look from a Comeround perspective, as a standalone technology, we, we were very used with the importing knowledge, uh, synchronizing knowledge, because we, we, we pretty much integrated with all the different ITS. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for questions. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. It looks like your internet is got cut out on us there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Y'all take care. You too. Take care. Have a nice take rest care. of your Have day. Have a good day. Good. Okay.